trephination. There's an obscure museum in Chicago called the Museum of Surgical Science. In this museum, they have thousands upon thousands of medical instruments and a very fascinating section on brain surgery. This museum will walk you through the whole history of brain surgery, starting with the Mayans, ancient Mayans, and the technique they used of trephination. When someone was possessed or insane or violent, they would give them their own form of lobotomy. Using a large bronze knife in the shape of an axe, they would gently carve away and chip away at the bones on the frontal lobes of the skull until the evil spirits, possessions, or whatever could be released. The ironic thing is that many times this homemade surgery would actually work. There are hundreds of examples of healed up skulls where the scars have been, have been healed over with a cratered bone. Many of these people lived to the ripe old age of 40 in those days. I always wonder how brain damage changes the human spirit. The person that you once knew all of a sudden has changed into something else. Does their new naivete create a spirit that's immune to temptation by the devil? Are they a sweet spirit that's being protected and hidden from his onslaughts? If I could make it through this life without sin and temptation, it would almost be worthwhile to be brain damaged or maybe even lobotomized. I can think of no better way of quelling passions. I wonder what it would be like if in an alternative universe I'd never put that cord in my brother's mouth. What would he be today? Would he be a businessman or a lawyer? Instead of living on the dole in public housing, would I have a hero worship on him? Would he be married and have children of his own now? With one simple mistake, he forfeited so much. I've talked to Trenton about all this and asked him for forgiveness. Probably the best words I'd ever heard were, Well, don't worry about it, bro. I forgive you for killing me.